in his word, gotta do what he say. I, I'ma keep living for God. I gotta trust and obey. In his presence, I'm shedding up tears. 2022, this is my year. To make sure I get rid of my fears. Cause I want all my people to hear. This ain't no joke, no game. I just want my family to be saved. I keep telling them that it's high. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to do. But tell them the truth, I got nothing to lose. Jesus, he saved me. He really changed me. Now I'm just spreading the news. In his presence, I'm waking up early. Every morning, man, I think it's mercy. And this is the best decision of my life. Yeah, this is a wonderful journey. I don't care if they hurt me or if they curse me. I'ma keep showing his mercy. And I'm thanking the Lord that he's cleaning me up. Cause my heart was filthy and dirty. I don't care if they hurt me or if they curse me. I'ma keep showing his mercy. And I'm thanking the Lord that he's cleaning me up. Cause my heart was filthy and dirty. What's your God till I'm gone? Chisma Eugene, another video from Exit Strategy. I'm not using the mic today. Uh, it's just a mic on the phone. I think that'll be adequate enough. It seems to do good. I only use the mics when I'm out. Well, I use them inside too, but I've uh, listened to some videos that I've done with just the phone and it works, it works good. Um, that was uh, Isaiah, MTM Isaiah, MTM Isaiah. Young kid, I've been listening to him for about a year. And I, I do, I listen to, I listen to uh, what you call Christian rap. Just thought I'd share that one with you guys. I'll take it or leave it. Good inspirations at the very least. I want to talk about when we are awakened. And I've said this before, or I've spoken about being awakened before, but uh, I, was, I just got thinking today or this morning about something I wanted to share with you guys. And I'm hoping that it, uh, you can relate to it. And if you can, I hope it even helps you get past where you are to where you're trying to go for, for the good. And uh, what that was is uh, I've mentioned being uh, terminated from my job uh, last August, I believe it was, yeah. And I've mentioned uh, in part what I perceive was uh, what was, what was uh, being done you, you can see the plot, or at least we think we can or we believe we can, because the plot was set when I walked into the job or the workplace. As an empath or a chosen one, you know that uh, the deck is already stacked against you. Uh, just, just in general, when you walk into a room, uh, you can see how people stare at you, at you, how people become fixated on you. They want to readily befriend you. Because of your energy, because of your aura, your authenticity, uh, you have a light on you that draws people. But more importantly, I want to talk about uh, as you're healing, God will afford you bits and pieces in, uh, at different points and times in your healing. He will, he will bless you with components to why and how these pieces of this puzzle fit. In essence, what I'm saying, if you fall out with a friend, it may be weeks, days, months, even in some cases years, you'll be going on about your life and healing, such as myself and uh, a lot of you other empaths and chosen ones. You're kind of uh, far removed from the incident or the interaction that you once shared with the, with the, with the narcissist. And you're on a healing journey to be your best person. And so uh, and you're learning a lot of new things about yourself that you didn't realize that you had and possessed within you. You, you find out you were already okay by yourself. Although we uh, desire to be with someone, uh, we were in search for happiness or uh, someone to complete us or to uh, compliment us 
shared life with us and we came up short. Uh, but it's a reflection now of ourself of what we are as an individual apart from anyone else. And it's a damn good feeling. But what you'll begin to see in, bit, in bits and pieces and, uh, as you progressively heal, God will afford you. He will bless you with pieces to the puzzle of what you thought took place, what players there were involved in your demise. And this can be in any facet, in, even in the family structure. I guess what I'm saying, once you're out of the situation, you begin to look in the rearview mirror, as I like to say, and you'll see uh, all the carnage and all the players that were that had their hand in your demise. God will show you this. And I believe what he does, he shows us this in bits and pieces. He does this for a reason because you know why? It is so overwhelming once you come out of this abuse. So I think God in his mercy and his grace won't load you up with all of this stuff at one time because it'll literally uh, cripple you. And also, you would be taken into your emotions and you would probably act in very, very vicious, violent, erratic ways. I'll take, for example, again, when uh, the narcissist I married in 2019 and uh, consequentially she ended up uh, out of my house in less than a year, nine months, I think around nine months, early 2020, just before the country shut down completely, where, you, you know, we, we, would, we would have been trapped in, in indoors with, uh, with this person. And I believe God had his hand in that too. It was just a perfect storm. And once she, she left, I began to retrieve surveillance information, the visual uh, video of uh, individuals, not one individual, but a couple individuals coming into my home in, in the cover of darkness, them not knowing that the surveillance camera was on them. Now, had God showed me that when the person was living with me, I, I guess you guys can do the math on that, there would have been a whole different outcome, very much so. And who's to say that the outcome uh, had to be the way it was when I discovered this? I'm going to show you why the outcome uh, was for my benefit and not my demise. Because I got right into the whole idea and definition and behavior of this disorder. Once I Googled it and I discovered what, in fact, that I was living with, I began the pilgrimage of delving into and understanding what it was and who these people are, actually who this person was. And then by in <clears throat> investing in who this person was, <clears throat> I was able to not only educate myself, but I was able to understand that this person, this individual, this, this is their mess all by themselves. I just happened to be an unlucky lucky candidate, the next guy in line. And uh, I began to expound on the behavior as it pertains to other people around me. And God opened a can of whoop ass in the enlightenment process. He began to expose things and, and, and entities around me uh, who I, in, in, in times past, thought were, wouldn't say solid individuals, but I actually thought they had uh, some kind of moral compass. They had some depth to them. And they, in, and it, they in turn, ended up uh, being shallow based on all the information that I was being able to uh, grasp. And so I essentially started to back away from a lot of people. Uh, and I didn't have a whole lot of people that were in my circle. But I'm just saying individuals where I would see out and about, I began to go poker face, gray rock, no contact. I, I, I used all of those, arse, those uh, I used all those angles in my arsenal. And that is also what aided in my healing. Because the understanding of who these people are 
nothing speeds your healing up like the understanding of who they are. And as you're understanding who they are, you don't want to spend too much time in the mud there. You, you also want to uh, simultaneously uh, spend time with understanding who you were before and the condition you were in when the narcissist met you. You probably was were, were resonating very high, vibrating very high. You probably was in a low uh, state in your life, which is also what they garner from. They garner from negative energy and positive energy. All they want is attention. And when you're in a low vibrational state and you're going through something, they latch on to that because they want to be the reason for the season. It's a very, very uh, complex weaving of their deception. They'll essentially see you broke down on the side of the road. I'll use that analogy. I see people broke down occasionally. I used to stop for a lot of people. I don't do it as often now. I just helped someone, I think, a month ago, maybe even a few weeks ago. Just random acts of kindness. I've since stopped doing that as much for two reasons. Because there's there's very it's a very dangerous situation on the side of the roads right now, even for police officers. So you really want to be mindful of that. But when it nudges at my heart and God compels me, I turn around and I'll help this person get off the road safely and be on their way. Now, uh, I only mention that because I've been doing this for years, but that's an analogy of what the narcissist does when they see you. They see you in your life broke down, needing some assistance. They want you, they want to give you the illusion that they are the assistance that you were hoping for. come in giving you that illusion and they're pretty good at it but once you awaken they're poor at it they actually start doing too much out of the gate no person when you meet them in the entry stages of a relationship or interaction or friendship should be that overzealous to do and be and behave towards another total stranger I mean nonchalantly uh, cordially um, you know, just gracefully, yeah. But the over obsessiveness and insistence on how they come across, it is eerie. Once you're awakened, and I've since have it have to, I've since had to look at myself, how I behave in that fashion, or how I have behaved in that fashion. The overzealousness, the eagerness to help. I still help people, but it's all in my approach now. I'm a lot less imposing. Although being impel, we are just eager to help someone. And we're genuinely uh, interested in trying to see somebody do better or do good. It is just something that is innate to who we are. God has planted that seed in our heart help people grow so these are things God will show you as you begin to heal you will begin to put things or he will allow things that you are not even thinking about they will just cross your mind and they will connect the dots for you and and this is what I believe God is doing he is wholeheartedly healing you in all aspects so you don't leave any uh, stone unturned and you'll go into maybe a store or you may be at a traffic light and you may happen upon a person at the light or you may see a person coming out of the store who was in in times past uh, in related in relations to that situation you were in with a narcissist you may have known them they may be have been mutual acquaintances and what you will readily uh, determine when you see that person coming out of that store, you'll be like, wow. Huh? Subconsciously, you'll say, wow. Oh, I know her or him. I haven't seen them in a while. They used to come around a lot when I was involved with that demon. Had I not seen them then, I would not have thought of them that they have not come around. These people just disappear. They begin to dissipate. 
because the work is done. They've done a number on you. And so all the, the players, they retreat because they essentially withdraw their uh, presence from you because this is all uh, a part of the dismantling of who you are. They don't want your infrastructure of support to be there. Whereas they were helpful, they were eager, eager to know how you were doing, just generally, hey, what's up? what's up? You'll see that a lot of them will go the opposite way when they see you. And this could be a number of reasons a narcissist could have gotten to them. Most often, she, she or he has. They've, uh, they've uh, smeared you, probably even when you were involved with them. More than, more than not, you know this is the case. They're smearing you while you're yet involved with them. So they've already got a head start on you. So you don't have to uh, be mindful of trying to tell anyone your story. Uh, I know when we first come out of this, we want everybody to know what we've discovered. I did it. We want to talk to people about uh, the things that the person took us through. Not knowing that the people we are relating this stuff to themselves could very well be narcissists. And you begin to learn this after you uh, are awakening and healing and healing. It's a progressive thing. And God will continue to bless you in this way. He'll continue to show you these little bits and pieces of uh, you know, things that you would have otherwise not even been uh, concerned about because he is, he, he is progressively healing you as a whole, but he's doing it in parts. And so uh, once he's finished with this completion of that healing, you close the door on this stuff, you have this consciousness of these people that I was referring to or these players they you pay them no never mind and you can do it with grace you can go about your life you can consider them as deceased pretty much and and, and, and that's just how you have to pretty much look at these individuals they are no longer existence in your life and you may see them in times in the future but the difference is you'll be able to just have a zen where you can stand in the line uh, either behind them or they can be uh, behind you and you can just focus on the matter at hand you don't look at them you, you've heard the, uh, the statement made don't stare and look a narcissist in the eye because they like to read your emotion same thing goes for the flying monkeys I can sense when some of these people want you to uh, connect with them by way of eye contact guess what I do I deliberately starve their asses for uh, the eye contact, the connection that they so desperately want. And uh, if by chance someone else happens to strike a conversation up with me, be it a total stranger, I would, I will casually just become engaged with that individual, leaving that codependent flying monkey, narcissists themselves, whoever they may be, whatever title they may have attributed to their mindset. Uh, I, I don't have time to figure out who these flying monkeys are, if they're really narcissists too. The, the thing is, once they are indicated to you in your mind and God shows you that they may in fact have blood on their hands too, you don't have to worry about just dissecting what exactly they are. You know for a fact, at the very least, they are no good for you. And so you continue to just focus on what's in front of you, not what's around you. And these people, they dissipate, they decompose just like the narcissist. And of course, they'll continue, very much so, continue to smear and smudge your name. But if you're healing and becoming whole, ain't a damn thing anyone says about you is going to have any type of uh, effect on your life. They may actually aid in helping you uh, keep toxic people away from around you. So what they do when they do smear you, they do handy, they do the handiwork for you. They do all the footwork for you. They make sure and ensure that toxic people who you've never really had an interaction with stay their ass at bay. That's the way I see it. 
and you're able to focus on genuine connections because all these other people that I describe are just distractions. If I want to be distracted, I don't know, I can go fishing, I guess. And I rarely go fishing. I don't know the last time I went fishing. But my whole thing is this. I don't need distractions. I got too many things to do. I got too many people depending on me. I got too many people that I know need information, such as what I'm giving. And um, a lot of us know what I know. We know what we know. But how we present this to, to one another in different ways and from different angles, I think, helps a lot of us connect the dots in a way that in and of ourselves we wouldn't be able to connect them. We are almost there in a lot of cases, but I sometimes hear people on videos and it, it really resonates and it, it actually hits different. So that's why I'm very happy and eager to uh, to come on when I do. So uh, I wanted to talk about that and I'm 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 kind of I'm kind of certain that some people will really understand what I'm talking about. Because as you're healing, you're going to begin to see this stuff. It's going to happen. These thoughts are going to come to you. But don't get uptight. Don't panic. Just kind of let it flow. Let the thought come. Because this is God revealing to you. He's bringing closure to the things that <clears throat> you might have had doubt in the back of your mind of. Or it was something that was incomplete. And he just brings that thing to, to, to mind. Because he wants that door to close. So, guys, have a wonderful Friday, and I hope you have a blessed weekend. That being said, bless.